Now that we've laid out some cues within our playback buttons and on our regular playbacks, let's go ahead and build some effects. Inside of Onyx, there are two ways we're going to work with effects today. The first is the effects generator, which allows us to create a lot of interesting effects in a typical fashion. Then we have the Dylos pixel mapper. We'll cover that in our next video. Dylos is completely integrated into the Onyx system and allows us to run video content across our lights, but so much more as well too. As you'll see, Dylos enables us to make effects that were impossible before using the regular effects. Let's dive in. Here on the fixtures and presets window, I'm just going to clear twice and then select my darts so I know I'm starting fresh. Now we'll go ahead to intensity and then I want to go and I'm going to bring my intensity to 50% here. Right about there. Now we'll go over to effects. As we've mentioned before, the regular parameters are on the left. We touch or activate a regular parameter or select it. And then on the right, we go to effects, effects timing, and fanning. So now we have four options. I'm going to pop it up here on the screen. And I'm also going to pop out this viewer because it's going to help explain the concept. When you're programming, you may not need to see this, but it makes life easier right now. So on an intensity effect, we have swing, speed, mode, and multiplier as our options. Swing is how far off of the base point the effect is going to run. I'm going to start at 100% because we're in the middle of the range for intensity at 50%, and that will cause the effect to come up to 100 and down to zero nice and smoothly. Next we have speed. Now we'll start to see it moving. Speed is just a speed, so set it to whatever looks good. You can always tweak it as you move. Then we have mode. Mode is the shape that the effect runs as it goes across the light. As you may be able to see, the default mode is a sine wave. But as we click through them, there are different modes that go forwards or backwards. And we can see that illustrated on the icon here. The black line in the icon is the base. So for example, this mode is purely additive. It doesn't subtract from the base at all. Whereas the sine wave over here both adds and subtracts. Last, the multiplier is a speed control. As you can see, you can make an effect go quite fast at a certain BPM. I'm going to leave that at the default and now go to effects timing. We have an effect, it looks nice, but it's running all, on all our lights at the same time. So we have wave or step as options for our effect. If I set a wave of 12, I've got 12 lights. It has now spread that effect evenly across those lights. If I go to six, for example, I've got two groups of six here. Now I can see I've got my two sides and they're happening in sync with the effect restarting every six units. Set it to something that doesn't divide well, and you'll get an offset between your two sides, get something nice and asymmetrical. If I turn off wave and go to step, I, again, I can use the screen or the encoder wheel. I'll see here that a step of 12 is different than a wave of 12. They're both working with the offset or the timing of the effect across all the lights but they work a little differently. In step mode, as we can see, each fixture completes the effect and then the next fixture goes ahead and starts. It creates chasing type effects. And so if I dial this back to like three, now we have an effect that's chasing in three separate groups. I'm gonna go ahead, set this back to wave. So turn off the step control and then set that wave of six. Great. Now we'll go ahead, record this, place it on our cue list. We'll go to number 10 and make it an override. Give it a name, type tap override, because this is the first override we've created. Clear twice. And now we've got the effect on an override. The benefit of the override, as we noted before, being that I can bring this down for less intensity. And also, because in here, 
I recorded effects speed and size as well as the overall intensity base. All of those are scaled as I come down. So as I bring this really low, the effect is really slow and subtle. As I bring it up, it becomes more apparent till at the top of the fader, it's at the full speed that I record. Let's go ahead and build a color effect. And for this, we use the effects macros. I'm gonna pull up my darts intensity fader manually. And we're gonna go to the effects program window here inside of Onyx. Now, the effects program window has effects macros, which are pre-built effects that apply to a single fixture. So when we select them, like I'll select here this, uh, go ahead to this dark blue red step. Gotta select my lights first, dark blue red step. We see that all the fixtures are in sync. There's no timing information recorded because ultimately this can apply to one fixture, 10 or 1,000 or 700. So once you apply, we just go to the timing, which I already have up, maybe set a step of three, and then we go ahead and we can record this to an override. Awesome. Same thing, we get that control, which for this effect controls the overall swing, which is the saturation of the effect, if you will, and then the speed as well. If we combine our two overrides together and bring down our submaster, we see now we can get some different combinations of both color effect and intensity effect. Mix that in with our submaster. We can have all color, get our intensity back, and get a lot of different options. Let's go ahead and build a movement effect. So now we've cleared, we'll reselect our darts here. Make sure the link button isn't flashing. Uh, we had used that in the effects macro. It's a concept called effects link, and we have information on it both in the manual and the Elation Educational Center. So we'll go ahead now, over to pan tilt, and then over to effects. Now, we see very similar to what we saw in the intensity effect, but we have swing pan and swing tilt together. We're working with these together in this instance, but it is possible to separate them as well. So for this example, I'm gonna first bring up my tilt and bring up my speed till I get what, something that I like. Then we'll bring in a little bit of pan on it. Figure is very important here. This is like a mode, but for pan and tilt together. And as you can see, I'll pop the side view out. The figure is going to determine how pan and tilt relate. So in this case, I'm gonna scroll down to one of these figure eight looking ones. Maybe bring up my pan swing just a little bit more. And then bring in some effects timing. I'm gonna go with seven because it doesn't divide well into our total of 12 and makes for a really nice asymmetrical look. Awesome. Now we can go back at any time, work with the regular effects parameters. So I'm gonna speed this up Record it here, pop it on an override fader, and done. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and combine some of these effects together. As you can see, we can bring up our intensity effect, combine our color, bring in our pan tilt, and do any combination of the three as we go, combining with our submaster to have an intensity level while the intensity effect doesn't run. You can see here that just with three effects faders, we can get a lot of different options. And if we mix in our different playback buttons here that we already made, now we can go ahead and really make a live show interesting. Switching between all sorts of different effects here, changing the speed, settling them down, maybe bringing a little bit of color as needed, and changing between intensity and the effect to be able to get a wide variety of options. With just these three faders, you can easily get 12 different looking effects, but again, it's only three overrides. Now that we've covered the basics of using effects here in Onyx, let's go ahead and dive into the Dylos Pixel Mapper, where it's not just pixel mapping, it's a whole new effects pixel mapping 
and even more. Let's head over there.